Hello everyone. I welcome you all to our channel Regalia and our today's topic is chromosomes. So, uh, as you can uh, as you can see by the word chroma means color and soma is body. So, chromosomes are rod shaped dark stained bodies, okay? They are basically rod shaped. Uh, this is a rod rod shaped bodies and are darkly stained. So, starts Berger in 1875 he first described chromosomes and Waldir he used the term chromosome. Then chromosomes have affinity to basic dye. Uh, now what is the concept behind this basic dye is uh, chromosomes are basically an aggregation of uh, DNA material and DNA is acidic in nature. DNA acidic hence uh, it has affinity for base. Therefore, the chromosomes have affinity for basic dyes. Now, Sutton and Bovary in 1902, he suggested the role of chromosomes in hereditary or how uh, chromosomes play a role uh, in transferring characters from the parents to the offsprings. Now, uh, there are certain terms that uh, you should be aware of. First is homologous chromosomes. So, homologous chromosomes are, are the chromosomes which are identical in morphology, gene content, gene order, everything. Okay, so it is a misconception. Uh, usually, students think that uh, that homologous chromosome means only identical in morphology, but it is identical in morphology, gene content, as well as the order of the gene. Now, now we will see uh, somatic chromosome number. So, chromosomes which are found in the somatic cells, and uh, specifically the meristematic tissues of species, uh, these chromosomes are uh, regarded as the somatic chromosome number two n. Gametic chromosome number or uh, chromosomes that are found in the gametes, they are one half and each gamete of a species contains only one copy of each of the different chromosomes of a species. In the meristematic cell, what happens is that one round of DNA replication is followed by one cell division. Like for example, this is, this is a cell and uh, the chromosome got replicated. This is a cell and chromosome so once the chromosome got replicated or it it got divided into two the cell also will get divided so each cell will have one chromosome in it but in the differentiating cells cells undergo endo root duplication what is endo reduplication one or two rounds of dna replication okay one or two rounds of dna replication without any cell division so it will lead to aggregation of chromosomes in one cell only and this condition is called endopolyploidy and the species are regarded as endopolyploid species and such species have 2, 4, 8 times the DNA content which is present in the meristematic cell because in the meristematic cell as you have learned that one round of DNA replication is followed by one cell division but in differentiating cells it is not the case it is just the opposite now what is chromosome diminution so what happened is that some chromosomes or portion of chromosome may be eliminated in the somatic tissue okay and uh, such a case is found in para ascaris equorum the example is important definition is not that much important but uh, if you can if you want to go go, go much into the depth of this uh, chromosome diminution you can serve the internet you will get much matter on that now haplopapus gracilis haplopapus gracilis has the lowest chromosome number in plant Okay, and that chromosome number is 2n equals to 4 and it is a member of compositive family. It is an important question because uh, many of the students are not aware of the family of haplopapus. Chromosomes are smallest during anaphase. Okay, not during metaphase. It's a misconception. Please just uh, clear it over here only. It's metaphase. And chromosomes are best studied in metaphase. Okay, they are best studied in metaphase but smallest only in anaphase. Longest metaphase chromosome is found in trillium. Trillium it's a plant and it's found in trillium 32 micron long. Now uh, here is a list of some important uh, organisms and their chromosome number. So first is a strawberry. Strawberry 2 and 56 and 28. Actually strawberry is octapolyploid. Octapolyploid. It has been asked in various examinations and so it's an important fact it is 2n equals to 8x actually okay 2n equals to 8x now haplopapus gracilis 4 
यू हैव ऑलरेडी रेड अबाउट इट ब्रेड मोल्ड न्यूरोस्पोरा क्रासा ब्रेड मोल्ड न्यूरोस्पोरा न्यूरोस्पोरा ब्रेड मोल्ड हैज क्रोमोजोम नंबर फोर्टीन एज द सोमैटिक वन राइस ट्वेंटी फोर राजमा अगेन इट्स एन इंपॉर्टेंट प्लांट ट्वेंटी टू पेपर वन ट्वेंटी एट इन प्लांट्स पेपर एज द हाइएस्ट क्रोमोजोम नंबर इन इन द कल्टिवेटेड स्पीशीज एक्चुअली कल्टिवेटेड प्लांट्स ओके पेपर टू एन इजक्वल्स टू वन ट्वेंटी एट नाउ पी फोर्टीन डिप्लॉयड वीट फोर्टीन टेट्राप्लॉयड ट्वेंटी एट एंड ब्रेड वीट फोर्टी टू नाउ हाउ वी विल राइट लाइक डिप्लॉयड वीट टू एन इक्वल्स टू टू एक्स इक्वल्स टू फोर्टीन टू एन इक्वल्स टू टू एक्स इक्वल्स टू ट्वेंटी एट ओके फोर एक्स सॉरी टू एन इक्वल्स टू सिक्स एक्स इक्वल्स टू फोर्टी टू नाउ जी एम एज ट्वेंटी पैरास कैरिस इकोरम टू लोवेस्ट नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोजोम्स इन एन ऑर्गेनिजम इफ अ क्वेश्चन कम्स लाइक द मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोजोम्स इन एन ऑर्गेनिजम वी विल गो विथ पैरा एस कैरिस इकोरम इट्स टू फ्रूट फ्लाई एट होमोसेपियंस फोर्टी सिक्स रीसिस मंकी फोर्टी एट एंड ट्रिलियम ट्रिलियम द लॉन्गेस्ट मेटाफेस क्रोमोजोम आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट सो इन ट्रिलियम यू विल सी द लॉन्गेस्ट मेटाफेस क्रोमोजोम हैज क्रोमोजोम नंबर ऑफ टेन सो इट इज ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट नाउ वी विल सी द क्रोमोजोम मॉर्फोलॉजी ना क्रोमोजोम मॉर्फोलॉजी एज फर्स्ट आई शो यू दिस फिगर दिस इज अ वेरी बेसिक डायग्राम ऑफ क्रोमोजोम you uh, you can see a centromere okay you can see chromosomes and each chromosome has uh, i mean one chromosome has two chromatids okay and it is a typical mitotic chromosome at metaphase stage uh now we will see uh, the structure in depth from simplified we will go into deep into a depth now as you can see these are chromonema chromomeres chromomeres are the heterochromatinized parts present in a chromosome and the heterochromatinized part actually it gets aggregated at a point and it forms a chromomere and the lines or the strands that join a chromomere are called chromonema okay chromonema like it's a chromomere it's a chromomere and it's a chromonema okay now this is a matrix matrix filled in the chromosome in the chromatid now uh, these are the euchromatic uh, these are the euchromatic region or region that are basically transcribed you will learn later this is a centromere or the point of attachment of the two chromatids or the chromosomes it's the heterochromatic region actually uh, centromere centromere basically constitutes the heterochromatic part of the chromosome the major heterochromatic part is concentrated in the centromeric region or the heterochromatic part is the part that is not transcribed okay which is not transcriptionally active or which does not take part in protein formation this is a uh, detailed diagram now it, it is the electronic microscope diagram of a chromosome in which you can see telomeres telomeres are the most apical parts chromatids or the arms of a chromosome centromere chromonema secondary constrictions and satellite about this we will study later in this chapter itself uh, but for now we should uh, neglect it now short arm short arm is the p arm and long arm is the q arm these are the donation uh, den uh, denotions that you should learn now for example a uh, long arm of chromosome 2 is called 2q okay centromere positioning now on the basis of the position of centromere chromosomes are divided into various uh, types like first is the metacentric chromosome in which the chromo uh, centromere lies at the center and it forms a v shape during anaphasic separation these are all the uh, structures which are formed during the anaphasic separation sub metacentric means formed just far away from the centromere it will form either a v or a j shape now acrocentric acrocentric means near to the terminal point like it's a chromosome so if a centromere is located near to this point so it will form either a j shape or a rod shape acrocentric and telocentric So when the centromere is present exactly at the apical part, okay, at this point it's always a rod or eye shape. You can say, we, uh, usually we say a rod shaped structure. Now, on the basis of number of chromosomes, chromosomes are divided into like monocentric chromosomes, single centromere. In the majority of the species, you will find this only. Now, polycentric, more than one centromere. Examples are important, like 
lazula okay generative cells of paraskerisicorum thynata basically it is found in animals lazula paraskeris thynata they are all organ uh, animals now localized centromere localized means confined to one or more points found in major cases like it is a localized centromere at a particular point diffuse if the centromere is spread or it is or the activity is non localized it is diffused cohesion complex cohesion complex is a complex that holds the sister chromatids together so what is a sister chromatid like for example this is a chromosome these are sister chromatids sister arms okay now the complex that holds them together is called a cohesion complex okay core is made up of smc proteins smc proteins are smc1 and smc3 proteins smc full form of smc is structural maintenance of chromosomes okay and it is formed during the s phase s phase is the phase of cell cycle division when uh, the dna replication takes place it will be told to you in the later lecture so for now just learn that it is formed during the s phase anaphasic separation due to release of the protein scc 1p if you have studied about the cell division you might have studied a phase called the anaphasic separation in which the chromatids or which the sister chromatids separate from each other and this separation takes place due to a protein which is called as scc 1p now centromere consists of highly repetitive dna which is called a sat dna or satellite dna okay this uh, i have also shown you in the previous diagrams like it is a chromosome it is a centromere so there are certain uh, dna uh, there are certain dna bases which are highly repetitive in nature okay and the dna bases are called the satellite dna bases or, or it is known as uh, it, it is known as the satellite dna and the satellite dna is constitutive heterochromatin in nature it means they remain heterochromatinized for the entire part of it of their life okay means they remain transcriptionally inactive constitute 10% of total dna present in genome of a species now we will see about telomeres what are telomeres so two ends of a chromosome okay a chromosome a telomere a telomere highly stable and do not fuse with each other they are highly stable and they do not fuse with each other damaged telomere become unstable and get fused Now what happens is that if a telomer is broken from here, if a telomer is broken from here, the chromosome will get attached. And if one chromosome also has a telomer broken, these two chromosome has a tendency that they can fuse with each other because telomeres basically they provide stability to a chromosome. And when they are detached from the chromosome itself, the chromosome becomes unstable. Now why are telomeres so stable? A reason that uh, a reason that uh, I will tell you. Like the first reason is the hairpin loop. okay hairpin loop uh, for the uh, for you uh, so that you would understand properly here is a hairpin that is usually found at our homes and this is a structure which is formed by telomeres okay now you can see there is a gg bond gg bond this guanine guanine bond helps in the stabilization of the telomeres hence the entire chromosome gets stabilized okay gg hydrogen bonding because you know that a gg bond is a strong bond and due to the strong bond it is difficult to break this bond as a result uh, uh, as a result uh, the uh, the telomere is uh, highly stable okay so if it is asked in the examination like why the telomere is so stable because of the gg hydrogen bonding which leads to the formation of a hairpin hairpin loop you can say now what are satellite chromosomes earlier i have told you about satellite dna but satellite chromosome is something different from satellite dna chromosomes having a secondary constriction okay and the secondary constriction is usually fixed and it is generally located in the short arm of a chromosome of one end okay now this is a chromosome like for example this is a chromosome or you could say this is a secondary constriction this is a chromosome this is a secondary constriction one centromere and one other constriction this constriction is called as a satellite and the chromosomes that contains a constriction is called as a satellite chromosome note note and and it is an important note satellite dna is not at all related to sat chromosome so if you have a misconception like 
like sat chromosomes contain satellite dna it is not at all true uh, it is a false assumption so you should not go with that okay now secondary constrictions are also called nuclear organizer region and such chromosomes are also called nuclear organizer chromosomes so what we have studied yet till now that sat they are chromosomes which have a secondary constriction they are called as the satellite chromosomes sat secondary constriction have a fixed position and they do not contain satellite dna plus they are also called the secondary constrictions are called the nuclear organizer regions and the chromosomes are called nuclear organizer chromosomes so now we have two names one satellite chromosomes and second nuclear organizer chromosomes now nor of each chromosomes has several copies of rna the uh, nor of each chromosome has several copies of rrna ribosomal rna means the nuclear organizer region helps in the formation of ribosomes in the function of ribosomes i have told you in the chapter cell ultra structure part 2 i think and if you haven't gone through that lecture uh, i think you should go through it once now there are certain definitions so certain basic things about chromosomes first is the karyotype now karyotype is the general morphology of the somatic chromosome complement or the 2n number and it is arranged in the descending order of size descending order of size means the largest chromosome follows followed by the smaller smaller and the la and in the end the smallest chromosome ideotype the diagrammatic representation of karyotype is called as the ideotype and it is uh, represented in the form of a diagram okay and prepared for prepared for the haploid chromosome complement okay haploid chromosome complement it is important heterochromatin chromatin that takes up a deep stain during interphase and prophase and stained lightly during metaphase so chromatin we usually in general we say that chromatin stains uh, deeply okay because we consider the interphase but it stains lightly during metaphase the uh, the heterochromatin part okay and uh, the vice versa is true for euchromatin so in euchromatin lighter stain will be taken during interphase and prophase but it will stain deeply during the metaphase now heterochromatin is of two types first is the constitutive sorry first is the constitutive and second is the facultative so facult uh, what is the meaning of facultative facultative means ability to okay ability to so constitutive means they are permanent uh, they are permanent heterochromatics and does not revert to euchromatic but facultative they have a ability to become heterochromatic means actually they are euchromatic essentially and has undergone conversion to heterochromatic state okay now the example of constitutive is centromeric uh, centromeric region and the facultative is insects like bugs now in general in general we can say that heterochromatin is found both in centromeric and telomeric region okay it uh, it can be asked in the examination and it is sometimes confusing because we have learned that the centromeric region has the heterochromatinized part but it is not true okay the telomeric region also has certain kinds of heterochromatinized parts in it now all the highly repetitive regions all the highly repetitive class of dna is found in the heterochromatinized region means the dna that is repeated many a times are called the repetitive dna and it is found in the heterochromatinized part sat dna sat dna is present in the centromeric region as well as the telomeric region okay you have to learn this point it's important chromatin chromatin uh, what is uh, now chromatin is made up of three types of uh, three uh, it is made up of three things dna protein and rna where protein is the maximum amount 50 to 65% now dna dna is of two types first is the unique dna then is the repetitive dna unique uh, unique in the term itself is unique means it is not repeated in the genome well uh, the repetitive is is repeated several times now unique is present in single copy because it is not repeated in single copy but repetitive is present in multiple copy okay now unique uh, the unique dna in in human 70% uh, genome is unique while in rye only 8% so Uh, if you subtract by hundred, rye ninety two percent is uh, repetitive. Humans only thirty percent is repetitive. While in the bacterial cells also, you can find that the bacterial DNA has mostly the unique uh, DNA sequences. 
Now talking about the proteins. Proteins are of two types: histone as well as non-histone proteins. Histone proteins are basic in nature. Non-histones is usually acidic, but but neutral proteins may also exist. Okay, so uh, saying that only uh, saying that non-histone is uh, is purely acidic is false. Maybe some neutral proteins may also be present, but histone is basically nature uh, basic in nature. Histone histone is basic in nature and it constitutes about eighty percent of the total chromosomal protein and it is devoid of tryptophan okay devoid of tryptophan now uh, you might be considering uh, you might be thinking that what is a chromatin chromatin is the structural unit of a chromosome okay now if there is this chromosome this chromosome is made up of various chromatin threads or chromatin fibers okay so you should not be confused that's why i have told you earlier that these are chromatin fibers and chromatin fibers condense to form a chromosome we will see we will see in the later uh, the later part but so that you should not get confused i told you here here itself now histone basic in nature constitute 80% of the uh, 80% of the total chromosomal proteins and it is devoid of tryptophan it's not important it's your wish uh, if you will remember it it's good and if you don't want to remember it it's it's, it's absolutely fine Now histone histone molecule uh, is basically there are four types of histone molecule H1 histone H2A H2B H3 and H4 okay now uh, we can categorize it like there is H1 there is H2 there is H3 there is H4 but H2 has H2A and H2B okay now the molar ratio or the molecule or the moles number of moles uh, found is One mole of uh, H two in uh, in one chromatin thread we're talking about one mole of H two two moles of H two A two moles of H two B two two so one is to two is to two is to two is to two is the molar ratio. For a better understanding, you can see the structure like one, okay, one H one, one H one, one is to two, two H two A, okay, two H two A. Two H two A, two H two B, A, two H three, and two H four. One one, one one makes it makes it two. So one is to two is to two is to two. Okay, and uh, let me clear it for you. Now uh, you can see as in this figure, this is a linker DNA. Okay, what happens is that these histone molecules are wrapped around by the DNA, and then comes. A histone molecule H one H one molecule and H one molecule links both these cores. So it's a it's 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 kind of a bridge, and the DNA which links to histone molecules are called as the linker DNA. And between uh, and between these two big histone cores are present one uh, one uh, one linker uh, one uh, one H one histone. Okay. Now chromosome structure. when we talk about the chromosome structure first let us see that one micron metaphase chromosome like in a metaphase stage one micron chromosome actually it has 8000 micron dna so you can imagine like how this how this entire stretch of dna is stored in a small cell and it is all possible because of this chrom because of these condensation of the chromatin fibers okay what is a chromatin fiber it is the basic unit of chromosome structure models for chromatin organization how is this chromatin organized first is the folded fiber second is the nucleosome solenoid model so the folded fiber model it was uh, proposed by dupro in 1965 according to this model the chromosome is made up of chromatin fiber of 230 angstrom diameter okay so uh, chromosome is made up of a chromatin fiber of 230 angstrom diameter and according to dupro one uh, one dna double helix like if it's a one dna double helix it has it is made up of a single chromatin thread okay so a single chromatin fiber is equals to a single one dna double helix which is stabilized by proteins and divalent cations proteins histone proteins non histone proteins also dna replicates except at the centromeric region to hold the two strands dna okay so what is it, uh, it uh, i will tell you now nucleosome uh, nucleosome solenoid model this was given by konberg and thomson in 
Chromatin is composed of repeating units called nucleosome. According to Kornberg, chromatin is composed of some repeating units which is uh, known as nucleosome. So Dupro said that one DNA double helix as a chromatin is made up of single chromatin fiber. But he said that a single chromatin, how is that single chromatin formed? It is formed by the uh, which is composed of the repeating units called nucleosome. So nucleosome are the uh, structural and functional unit of a chromatin thread. Now nucleosome has a core, a single core, a linker DNA, H1 histone and 200 base pair DNA. It, and it may vary from species to species. So let me take you back once again. Uh, histone core. H1 molecule, okay, 200 base wrapped DNA around itself. Now, nucleosome has one core, okay, linker DNA, H1 is stored, 200 base pair DNA, and it may vary from species to species. This is a nucle uh, nucleosome structure. This nucleosome structure you can see like uh, H2A, H2B, H3, H4. This entire uh, core is nuclease resistant, okay. And this DNA which is wrapped around is 146 base pair long DNA molecule or we can say 1, 3 by 4 turns. So DNA wraps around a histone molecule by taking 1, 3 by 4 turns. Not exactly 1, not exactly 2, 1, 3 by 4. And this structure is called beads on a string structure. Now, uh, talking about uh, the linker DNA, linker DNA is 8 base pair to 120. 14 base pair depending on species and it forms the string part of heads on a string model or beads on a string model. It is nucleus susceptible. Okay, this part is nucleus susceptible. This H1 part, this uh, this H1 part, it is nucleus susceptible, and uh, the uh, and this entire core which contains the stone plus the entire the and the DNA wrapped around is is nucleus resistant. What is nucleus? Nucleus is, is an enzyme which breaks the nucleotides. Okay, now this is a structure and uh, in this structure you can see like these are the beads, these are the beads, these beads are the histone core and these are the linker DNAs. Okay, these are the linker DNAs. Now, this is the nucleosome solenoid model. Okay, in this model as you can see, oh, I will take you from here. This is a DNA double helix. 2 nanometer diameter or 20 angstrom. If you have studied this Watson Crick model, you might have known that this is a 20 angstrom DNA model. Now, in this DNA is stabilized with the help of histones. These are the beads on a string, and strings are linker DNA. Okay, linker is the string. After this, this this entire structure, this entire structure is called as a nucleosome. Nucleosome. So, uh, one. What is a nucleosome? I have told you earlier. This is a nucleosome. Okay, this entire structure is one nucleosome, and these nucleosomes, when they are stacked upon each other, they form a 10 angstrom or a 10 nanometer diameter of a stack, which is known as a nucleosome fiber. Okay, which is known as a nucleosome fiber. When when nucleosome fibers are formed, H1 histone is not required. H1 histone not required, but when these uh, when these nucleosome fiber they try to supercoil among around each other then a tight helical fiber is formed which is known as the chromatin fiber and this chromatin fiber is a tightly helical fiber 30 nanometer long chromatin fiber this uh, this chromatin fiber is 30 nanometer uh, in diameter okay so uh, this is the h1 histone uh, it is not required here and this chromatin fiber is the 30 nanometer chromatin fiber which further uh, coils to form a chromosome. This is a chromosome, the metaphase, which is 770, 700 nanometer fiber, or we can say it, okay, 30 nanometer, 10 nanometer, 2 nanometer, 700 nanometer. This is the most universally accepted model. Now, chromosome replication. Chromosome replication, uh, you will study with respect to eukaryote. It is semi-conservative in nature, similar to DNA replication, and it was first demonstrated by J.H. Taylor by labeling the chromosomes of Vichia faba with the help of tritated thymidine. Okay. Now, special chromosomes. Special chromosomes are of three types, lambrush, giant or salivary gland and accessory chromosomes. Okay. Now, first we study about the lambrush chromosomes. The first uh, lambrush chromosome, the term was described by Ruckert. Ruckert in the shark oocytes. So, in the shark oocytes, uh, 
he first uh, described and he also gave the term but it was first observed in slamantra by fleming fleming had already observed it but he could not uh, give the term or he could not describe it it is observed during the prolonged diplotin stage Lamprey's appearance is due to lateral loops extending from the chromosomes. Now, uh, this is a lamprey. Actually, it is a lamp brush. You can see the lamprey. It resembles this lamprey chromosome. The threads that are emerging out, and uh, now a maternal and a paternal chromosome. This is the entire structure. Okay, chromomere, chromatin loop, the last section of a chromosome. So, it is a chromomere. these are the chromatin loops now what happens is that as you can see chromatid chromatid the chromatin loop and it is a chromomere here these loops actually these loops are formed due to uncoiling of highly coiled dna the dna was coiled it got it got some kind of released and it formed these loops loops are the sites of transcription helps in the production of large number of protein and rna okay and the, the, these are the site of transcription now giant chromosomes also called as the salivary gland or the polyteen chromosomes it was discovered by balbiani in the dipteran salivary glands it is formed at a, as a result of somatic pairing means pairing of chromosomes chromosomes get paired with each other and it forms a it forms a huge chromosome also called as the giant chromosome pairing of homologous chromosomes in the drosophila melanogaster centromeric region it fuses to form a chromocenter in drosophila melanogaster Drosophila melanogaster chromosome. It has five long arm. Okay, this is the structure of a Drosophila melanogaster chromosome. It has five long arm and one one short arm, uh, and it is the it is actually the giant chromosome which you uh, which is uh, which you are studying right now. It is the giant chromosome. Now, in it has five long arm and one short arm. The one short arm is formed of chromosome number four. The five long arm. has the four long arms of are are formed by chromosome 2 and 3 while uh, the uh, while the uh, while the one arm which is left is formed by chromosome x okay this is the chromosome well puff we call as the balbiani puff okay balbiani puff we name it as the balbiani puff and it has dark bands the uh, the uh, the giant chromosomes it has the dark now these balbiani puffs Uh, are similar to the are to the loops that uh, we have seen here in the lamprey chromosomes the loops similarly these uh, these balbiani rings or the puffs they are formed due to the uncoiling of the chromatin fiber that extends outside the chromosome in the form of a loop okay so in the form of a loop the uh, the uh, chromatin fiber it it undergoes undercoiling or it undergoes un un uh, uncoiling they are the sites to active the rna synthesis rna synthesis means rna poly polymerase 2 is usually seen at these puffs now accessory chromosomes it was discovered by mcclung in 1900 and they are also called the b chromosomes or the supernumerary chromosomes which are present in addition to the normal somatic complement so accessory chromosomes why they are called the accessory chromosome because they are present in addition to the somatic chromosome they are found extra okay now they are usually heterochromatic heterochromatic and exceptions are partially heterochromatic in maize and completely euchromatic in tradis cancia origin is unknown but in metapodius they are formed due to the fragmentation of y chromosome metapodius is animal species okay and in cymex lectularis cymex lectularis they are uh, in cymex lectularis transmission through females okay now here are some important leftover points uh first plants have longer chromosomes than animals species with lower chromosome number have longer chromosomes okay so lesser the chromosome number longer is the chromosomes among plants dicots have shorter chromosomes than monocots see these are all generalized terms now these are all generalized term and you should not go into much specifications but just just, uh, just uh, learn them as some general points a chromomere chromomere we have all learned that they are the localized heterochromatic regions present in the chromosome these these chromomere uh, these chromomere is visible during the paketin stage of meiotic prophase and not visible during the metaphase chromosomes these stages i i hope so that you have uh, that you have gone through uh, in your uh, in your class 10th 11th 12th but if you haven't gone through uh, through these phases or you haven't learned about them i will take a lecture on this also 
okay the two chromatid of chromosome separate during mitotic anaphase and anaphase 2 of meiosis okay the variety chinese spring of wheat this uh, this uh, this variety has so what did scientists did was that they isolated the telocentric chromosomes from all the 42 different lines or you can say from all the 42 different chromosomes scientists scientists were able to make these telocentric chromosomes these these different 42 chromosomes in the variety chinese spring so with this so with this we end our today's lecture and i hope uh, you might have liked uh, what i have told you and you might have understood also so if you like the, the video uh, gives a uh, just give a thumbs up and uh, we have a telegram channel in which uh, in which we conduct daily quizzes as well as we prepare mock tests for the students so i will provide a link there in the in the description box so for now uh, bye bye and i'll see you in the next video thank you everyone